You're watching UTV News. My name is Inna Kosinska. Good evening. On June 2, members of the Foreign Relations Committee of the U.S. Senate visited Kyiv. During the meeting, President of Ukraine noted that the United States is an important strategic partner for Ukraine, especially now. According to senators, the U.S. Congress has already adopted the first package of sanctions against the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Moreover, they expressed hope for the adoption of an additional package of sanctions this year. In addition, the senators announced bipartisan support for Ukraine on security issues. We got a very clear picture of the challenges that your troops face and um, all of those in, on the front lines face. And it helps us so that we can go back to the United States and talk about the continued need to support your efforts there. President Zelensky gave us a virtual tour of the line of contact by allowing us to hear directly from his commanders in the field. We talked about other assistance we can provide on the economic front, on the reform front, even pushing back against Russian disinformation. Political selfishness and fear of hanging in Russia could lead to World War III. In an interview to the German newspaper, Ukrainian president warned about the threat for all European countries from the Kremlin. Experts say military risks remain high and Ukraine, together with partners, should not relax. Our journalists have studied the situation. Russia can start a full-scale invasion to Ukraine in the nearest future. Volodymyr Zelensky said this during an interview with the German newspaper. According to him, dozens of thousands of Russian military remain at the border with Ukraine. The biggest threat is the possible attack from the sea and the occupied Crimea, as well as from the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. There are many military options possible on the part of the Russian Federation, in particular naval operations. We are very concerned about this, and now there is a blockade of the Azov Black Sea region by Russian ships. They control it, despite international law in violation of it. That is what you said, one of the options of reaching Crimea and cutting this corridor from mainland Ukraine. There may be an escalation on the part of the occupied Donbass. We understand that perfectly well. Big jump, blitzkrieg to the borders of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. We are considering and preparing for such steps. According to the president, Ukraine also expects the strike from Belarus. The threat will intensify in September during the Zapa 2021 Russian-Belarusian drills. But experts say the Kremlin has long been preparing a bridgehead for an attack there. Over the past couple of years, the situation was being prepared by the Russian Federation, starting from joint legislation, which provides an opportunity for the armed forces of the Russian Federation to use the territory of Belarus as their own. In addition, under the guise of drills, various troops or weapons were sent to Belarus. The situation in Donbass remains difficult. Ukrainian intelligence reports Russia is bringing new weapons and ammo to the temporarily uncontrolled territories. At the same time, under the guidance of military instructors of the Russian armed forces, mercenaries were trained to join the reconnaissance and sabotage groups, sniper and sapper units. In addition, the occupiers install landmines across the territory adjacent to the contact line, which is prohibited by international conventions. In the context of the aforementioned threats, Volodymyr Zelensky called NATO's unwillingness to take Ukraine into its ranks and get involved in countering Russian aggression uncivilized, outdated and incorrect from the point of view of global security. The political selfishness that exists today because of these fears could lead to World War III. There can be no will-see position. Yes, no one wants that, but we already have the situation. It seems to me that this is not entirely fair. After all, we do the defense, we are the security wall of this philosophy of existence, European civilization, human rights and freedoms. Experts say it was important for the president to show Ukraine's position on the security issues on the eve of the meeting of the presidents of the United States and Russia, as well as the upcoming NATO summit. The issue of providing Ukraine with an action plan for membership in the alliance still remains relevant. There is no unity in NATO on this issue. The countries that border with Russia support our aspirations. But there are politicians who say let's not make Russia nervous, let everything be as it is. Such politicians are in Germany, in France, in Italy. If we still want to strengthen our partnership with NATO, then we should decide, are we only partners or we have an active large-scale full-fledged cooperation with NATO? At present, the Ukrainian authorities are counting on the activation of the Normandy format. The next meeting is already being prepared. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Yulia Kruchkova, UATV News. Ukraine again bothers Russia. The Russians have organized an informal meeting, which most of the UN member states ignored. 
And the key participants even made a protest statement, because at the propaganda meeting they talked about the events of 2014 in the center of Kyiv. But what's this? Is there any truth? My colleagues know more. They've just planned to talk fakes about the Euromaidan events of 2013-2014 in Kyiv and warfare in Donbass. Just for this purpose, Russia organized another informal event at the UN Security Council. Among the speakers were the sanctioned politicians of the times of the former Ukrainian president Viktor Yanukovych. None of the countries believed their propaganda statements about an alleged coup and civil conflict. Russia invited speakers sanctioned by UN member states for their violations of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Russia's false narratives about Ukraine are part of a disinformation campaign designed to destabilize and divert the attention of the international community. On the contrary, this propaganda event angered the European Union and the United Kingdom. In their general statement, they reminded Russia that it is an aggressor country, not a mediator in the conflict. The EU remains unwavering in its support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. We again call on the Russian Federation to immediately stop fueling the conflict by providing financial and military support to the armed formations it backs. UN representatives consider this step an attempt to divert the attention of the international community from Russia's aggressive actions and to promote their false thesis. Less than a month ago, the um, mission of Russia organized a very similar meeting um, to promote the same false narrative about the history of the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, we regret this misuse of the time of the Security Council members. France regrets the attempts by the Russian Federation to divert the attention of the international community with the organization of this ARIA formula meeting. We do not support in any way, shape or form the narrative put forward by the organizers in their concept note. Most of the UN member states ignored the meeting. Experts note that this is not the first and most likely not the last meeting of a kind initiated by Russia. The Kremlin needs them to spread propaganda both within the country and through the international media. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Roman Smoller, UATV News. As of June 4, the number of COVID-19 cases in Ukraine is reported to decrease. It's the data by the Ministry of Health. Thus, 2,226 cases were confirmed. Most of them are in Kyiv, as well as in Zaporizhia and Dnipropetrovsk regions. At the same time, more than 8,000 people recovered. Since the beginning of the vaccination campaign, a million and 265,000 people got their jobs in Ukraine. Also, White House announced plan to share 25 million of COVID doses with other countries, including Ukraine. Legalization of the medical cannabis and ban on the sale of drugs to children were discussed in Parliament this week. My colleagues will tell you the details. Four-year-old Sofia Mostovenko suffers from epilepsy since birth. Her mother took her to the parliament to participate in a civic meeting. The family asks MPs to legalize drugs based on medical cannabis in Ukraine because they can relieve Sofia's pain during the attacks. My child has epilepsy from birth, birth trauma. She has cerebral palsy. This condition is accompanied by many serious consequences. Epileptic seizures, lack of control over the body. Only the oil based on medical cannabis helps to reduce spasms, improve her sleep and appetite. The law on legalization of medical cannabis was named after Sofia. Besides her, according to the MPs, more than two million Ukrainians are in need of such drugs. The law should allow the cultivation of cannabis in the country and the production of medicine. These are drugs, these are oils, these are tablets that will be made on the basis of medical cannabis with a low tetracannabial content. It is exactly this substance that gives the high effect. These are relaxing, pain-relieving drugs. They will be used by people with epilepsy, post-traumatic stress disorder and Parkinson's disease. The parliament plans to resolve this issue by the end of summer. Besides, the MPs have approved a bill that prohibits the sale of any medicines to children under 14. In case a pharmacist has the slightest doubt about a client's age, they are now free to check the ID. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Artem Holub, UATV News. Text for Google. The law for foreign companies operating in Ukraine and making money on online advertising was approved by the Verkhovna Rada. In order to operate legally, companies should register in the taxpayer's electronic account. The law was introduced to increase revenues to the state budget. 
Facebook, Google and other non-residents of Ukraine pay taxes in the United States. This law stipulates that they will pay what in Ukraine and thus bring about 110 million U.S. dollars annually to the Ukrainian budget. Usually companies do not impose this tax on users because they paid it. We want them to pay in Ukraine. This week the parliament approved a law that limited the use of plastic bags in the country. In particular, in shops, catering establishments and other objects of the service sector. They will be taken out of circulation and disposed of, changed into biodegradable plastic and paper. Ukraine will completely abandon plastic bags until the year 2023. Those who break the law will have to pay a fine of $300 to $600. Ukrainians will be fined for distribution, namely the distribution in retail sector is limited by the bill. Accordingly, the owners of retail facilities, business entities will bear responsibility. This is what the entire European Union is doing, the world is moving towards this and we hope that Ukrainians will support this initiative. Millions to the state budget, new jobs and attraction of foreign tourists. Ukraine has already seen the first results of legalization of gambling business. Dozens of companies have been licensed to operate. Only in casinos, slot machine halls and sports betting operators. Several large casinos in five-star hotels have already opened in Kyiv. Our correspondent figured out what the gambling market can give from the economic development of Ukraine and how the state is going to control this fear. The first legal casinos are ready to start working in Kyiv. One of the co-owners, Ruslan Nonka, says being the first is difficult and risky, but the desire to occupy a niche and set the bar for other market players overcame the fears. We started preparations about two years ago, invested a lot of money even before legalization. The main thing is that we have opened a casino in Fairmont Hotel. There are slot machines, there is a roulette wheel. These are the world's top manufacturers, and the opening was quite cheerful. People were interested, there were a lot of foreigners as well. Gambling business in Ukraine has been illegal for the last 12 years. Despite this, underground slot machine halls and casinos operated in the country. After the police raids, they opened new places, and the honesty of their work with clients was impossible to control and they did not pay taxes. Now the fight against shadow casinos has been intensified. In fact, illegal clubs are being closed every week. A month ago, the security service of Ukraine managed to reveal more than 30 rooms that were connected with illegal financing of terrorism. The work of the state is being carried out in full, that is what the president promised, the deshadowing of economy in this segment. All the equipment of slot machine halls and casinos is certified in order to exclude deception of customers. Individuals over 21 are allowed to play. Each client is authorized in the common system. In the near future, a register of gambling addicts will be formed as well. They will be prohibited from gambling. In future, these registries are likely to be expanded. Those who don't maintain alimony payments get into the register of gambling addicts. Operators immediately see that one has a so-called black mark and he is not allowed to play. And if, for example, the ex-wife said that they let this defaulter in, then the commission reacts immediately. This is an automatic deprivation of the operator's license. At present, the most risky players enter the market. Many expect certainty in procedures, in particular the adoption of law and taxation of the gambling business. The Profile Parliamentary Committee has already submitted this document for consideration. Reported by Vadim Kromer and Yulia Kruchkova, UATV News. A new forum within the frameworks of the Ukraine 30 project has started in Kyiv on Monday, May 31st. This time it was dedicated to education and science. On the first day of the forum, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky announced the creation of a new university aimed at the annual training of about 2,500 specialists in the sphere of the latest technologies. They will be trained at the expense of the state, the president noted. However, main condition is that graduates should continue their studies or start working in Ukraine. The university will train specialists in information and cybersecurity spheres, specialists in artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, aerospace, energy and biotechnology. This concept includes the primary required amount of equipment for certain goals set in six strategic directions of development and educational areas. This will be a completely new building which will host its first students in some three years. The initial cost of this makes some 215 million US dollars. Adding the preparation works, development 
Development Office project and documents, the total sum will make about $250 million. In addition to organizing an entrance campaign for students from the temporal uncontrolled territories of the country, the forum participants intend to start modernizing the technical and vocational education. According to the previously announced strategy for the development of vocational education until the year 2023, the main emphasis of the relevant reform will be made uh, on the following tasks – the formation of an effective management and financing system, ensuring the equality of vocational education and strengthening cooperation with business. Professional education is changing. Vocational education – it's not a kind of an outdated Soviet-style vocational school which comes to mind here. This is the sphere of education which makes it possible for yesterday's school graduate to get a real profession tomorrow. The practice has to be acquired in a real production situation. New approaches to the financing of science will be started by the Ukrainian government. How to stop the outflow of scientists and arouse the interest of young people in scientific research, our journalists found out. Maya Vovk is one of the developers of the device, which is extremely important while rehabilitating patients after strokes and paralysis. The invention has already helped more than 21,000 Ukrainians return to normal life. Information from patients' own healthy muscles or from any other healthy person is passed to muscles that are not working, and it trains in these way movements that did not work because of the pathology. We tested the work of this device. As we see, the actions of my hand are fully read on a hand that is supposedly not fully functioning. With the help of current discharges, an impulse is transmitted to the muscles. The inventor's team has got many interesting ideas, but it is difficult to implement and patent them. There is a considerable lack of funding and modern technical equipment. Not every business is ready and capable of carrying out such products. In addition, the requirements for the release of such products became higher. A modern equipment base is needed to manufacture it. Development of the Ukrainian science and attraction of young people to this area is one of the priorities for the country. To do this, it is necessary to ensure the protection of the copyright of scientists, provide them with modern equipment, affordable housing and decent funding. I realize that science is a big deal, but is this principle of small funding and allocation of small sums across the spectrum of science enough? Or do we still need to identify those areas of science that we focus on, providing strong funding for them to continue to be the leaders of Ukrainian science? In order to increase interest in science among students, 3D printers, robots and real samples of human and animal organs are provided for study at the National University of Bioresources and Nature Use of Ukraine. They are embalmed on the territory of the university using a unique polymer technology. We produce these specimens so that you can show this not only in the picture, but hold it in hands. Here we have a laminated cow's brain. It is already cut in order to show the ventricles inside. As you can see, I'm already holding it without gloves. No reagents are needed. The training process is safer and there is no harmful effect on the body. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Vlada Tsurkan, UATV News. No roads, water, no electricity or gas. This is how Ukrainians live on the contact line. The armed conflict in Donbass has changed everyday life in the towns of Krasnohorivka, Novhorodsky, Kostantinivka and Turetsk. Personal stories were told in the unique photo project Ukraine – Faces of Conflict. Photographer Sergei Korovani has collected more than 20 stories about people who are forced to adapt to a new life under constant shelling. It is important for an international audience, because after years 2014-2015 Ukraine has left the top agenda of the world media. Here is now the conflict in the center of Europe, but people are involved in this conflict and civilized people suffer from it. Ukraine Faces of the Conflict project was already presented in Paris this May. The first exhibition by the photographer Serhii Korovaini took place there. He made a series of portraits of Ukrainians who live on the contact line for a charitable French organization. Because of the warfare in Donbass, more than three million people are in need of humanitarian aid. Some residents don't have gas, electricity or even potable water. So we have a main office based in Konstantinivka and a sub base in Bakhmut. And we are providing assistance in the framework of health, I was saying, in um, 
to different hospitals, mercy homes, but also to private persons living close to in, in villages located close to the line of contact. So it includes Avdivka, Krasnagarivka, Toryetsk, Pivnishne, Zalizhne, uh, Novogorodskie, Druskivska, Slavyansk also, depending on the type of project that we have. The task of the project is to remind politicians and the public about the difficulties that people living along the contact line face. Looking at these photos, I understand that this is how the Donetsk region lives. It is far from us and we don't see these problems. We think that everything is fine, everything is good and there is no war. And thanks to these photos, I understand it. This conflict is a personal thing for me, because I have relatives in the Donbass, so this is close to me. Anyone can come and see these photos. The exhibition will run in Kyiv until the end of June. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Svetlana Sich, UATV News. The International Children's Day on June 1st and the beginning of summer holidays were celebrated in Kyiv. Competition Kids and Juniors Games gathered 650 school children from different cities of Ukraine. The emotions of young athletes and their mentors were recorded by our correspondents. The first Kids and Juniors Games start with an incredible warm-up. Participants of the Kids and Juniors Games are from 6 to 15 years old. Competitions are held simultaneously on several sites. There are 30 teams competing for victory in cheerleading. Julia tells us about the sport and demonstrates the basic elements. When football teams play, there is the support who goes out and supports those teams. The first jump is called a pencil, the second is called a star, the third, a pressed one, as we call it, is the most difficult jump. Participants of badminton competitions came to support the first racket of Ukraine, the license holder for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Artem Pochtaryov. It is very important for children to practice. Well, what kind of physical education can there be at home? Only in society, with other children, when they can compete not in online games, but here. This is exactly what we have today. Nazar and his team came from Lviv to compete in korfball. He mastered this game at school. He says physical education lessons have become much more interesting. It was necessary to pass standards. Now there is just a sport and you do it during PE lessons. They look how you play, how you attend these lessons, and then they put grades. During the pandemic, children really missed mass events and live communication. The Sports Committee of Ukraine is convinced that kids and juniors' games will become traditional and will expand their geography. I believe that this event will become traditional, and the finals will be held in Kyiv. And if everything works out and the pilot is successful, we plan to conduct the events of a kind in the regions. There will be one winning team for each sport, and the rest of the participants will receive commemorative prizes. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Olena Diduch, UATV News. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Thank you for staying with UATV channel. Goodbye.